Welcome to Exhibition. And Ooh. hello, Sally Mackay. Good morning, Richard. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm delighted that you're here. Uh, and your exhibition is Making Waves at M Contemporary in Sydney. Um, and th this series of works was a, a collaboration, or at least in part, a, a collaboration with the Royal Botanic Gardens, uh, Centennial Parklands uh, and Greenpeace. How did that collaboration come about? Uh, the collaboration came about in three parts. So um, I worked separately with uh, each organisation. Uh, I worked with the Royal Botanic Gardens to collect green waste uh, to build up the base of all my installations. Each installation that I do is uh, almost two by two metres uh, and they're generally about 20 centimetres uh, in depth. And so I wanted to actually build them up using green waste and um, the Royal Botanic Gardens very generously um, gave me access to their green waste and uh, that enabled me to actually build the floor of each installation. And then I worked with Centennial Parklands to actually uh, create different um, sub, -environments, sub environments around each ocean. So uh, in the exhibition, each work uh, represents a different oceanographic area. Um, and then I worked with Centennial Parklands, so you can see in the, uh, on the back of this work here, there's, um, there's about eight different pines in that work and um, I was able to work with their senior horticulturalist to actually go and source those pines um, and utilise them for the construction of uh, each installation. And I worked with Greenpeace um, to further my knowledge about the ocean um, and uh, because I'm hugely interested in... Um, advocating for the ocean through my art. So um, it's been fantastic to work with them, um, building up my understanding about the situation um, uh, that we have with marine sanctuaries um, and the opportunities that we have uh, to actually protect our marine sanctuaries. The making process looks quite complex uh, and, and very substantial. How did you come to design the basic structure for uh, the works that you then photograph? Um, well, I'm in part a photographer and in part an installation artist. So I always uh, start with the installations. Um, and for this series of works, it was all about how to create a water sculpture and installation. Uh, that was the, the greatest challenge in actually making these bodies of work that you see behind me is actually was actually creating the water sculpture um, and, uh, and and then uh, underneath that uh, I worked with fabric to actually build the sand patterns in and then I filled the water sculpture with water and then um, did uh, hundreds of engineering tests to actually work out how I could photograph the movement of the water. So that was most certainly the most challenging part, but I guess also the, the most rewarding. Um, so the way that I worked was working on um, building up the water sculpture and then I build in uh, the installation around that so it can be photographed uh, as one. And uh, each of the installations of, uh, of plant ingredients around, are each of them directly relevant to the, the, the area that the photograph describes? Yes, yeah. So um, you can see down here that this, uh, in the corner of this image, uh, this is all Australian uh, natives. Um, and here there's more um, uh, tropical plants, so more reflective of the Pacific areas. And this is more forest, so more uh, reflective of the um, Atlantic Ocean areas. Why did you decide that uh, that all of these works would, in exhibition terms, be photographs rather than perhaps sculptural installations? My background is that I am a photographer. I'm also really interested in uh, creating something with photography that you, you actually can't create 
permanently on a physical level. So uh, obviously in these works, that these are that being able to capture that that slot, that you know that minuscule water movement you can only do with photography. Uh, the plants all degrade um, after. Uh, they usually start degrading sort of about three days after our, the installation. So um, I'm interested in the physical installation side, uh, but I, I'm really just more drawn to um, being able to capture moments in time. So I'm always trying to work really hard at making the images feel 3D and one of my hopes actually for this exhibition is that when you come into the exhibition because the works are very large some of the works are uh, one and a half meters by one and a half meters um, it is my absolute <laughs> uh wish that you'll come in and have this sense of i want to jump in so you'll have to let me know <laughs> <laughs> if that's what happens when you see them the circular motif uh is one which you've been engaged with for quite a number of years in your practice now uh, in various iterations. Uh, and, and there is a very strong multicultural tradition of the mandala of, of forms built around the circle. Is that something that resonates consciously with you? Uh, absolutely. And I, I think I will always be wondering why I'm so drawn to the circle. I think uh, I've thought about it a lot. Um, there's a wholeness in the circle. There's a completeness in the circle. There's something when you make work around a circle that uh, helps indicate when the work is complete. Uh, and so uh, I think I will always be drawn to the circle and I will always be trying to get down to that next layer, that next layer and understanding why for me that is such an intrinsic part of the way I work. Can we spend a little bit of time now actually going to one or two of the individual works in this exhibition? Um, and let's, let's begin with Australian Ocean Park. Uh, so the Australian Ocean Park is um, comprised predominantly of three different eucalypts. Um, and then uh, it's surrounded, the actual ocean part of that work is surrounded by um, wattle and woolly, um, woolly, uh, woolly butt, um, parts, parts of the woolly butt tree, which um, I was um, able to get from Centennial Parklands. The richness of this image comes from actually the diversity, the biodiversity um, of the Australian flora and fauna. And uh, because these works, um, when you see them actually at their actual size, um, you start to have the opportunity to say there are um, hundreds of plants uh, that make up the work. And um, it's for me, this is one of the, the images in the show that actually um, you have to see in person to really appreciate just how phenomenal um, our Australian native plants are. Um, and I think for me, I'm interested in people starting to question uh, uh, and think about our native plants and our uh, endemic plants. So our plants that are just native to this specific area that we live in in Sydney um, and start having conversations around those because of this work. Let's go all the way now to uh, the Northern Hemisphere to Arctic Ocean Sanctuary. This work was... Uh, uh, it took a long time to create, actually, because finding plants in, in the Australian climate uh, that are reflective of um, uh, the uh, nature around the Arctic region was a huge challenge. Um, and um, it's an, uh, the main plant in this is an acacia plant, um, and it has a really beautiful um, white lace uh, flora on it. And, uh, and so that when you see this up close, you can start to give this feeling of snow and um, a, a, a coolness to the image um, that's reflective of the Arctic Ocean area. And a more generic uh, title, Marine Protected Area, and, and it does seem to have a ring of yellow flowers. What are, what are those yellow flowers? So I was inspired to make that 
ring uh, in this artwork um, after I watched a documentary called Mission Blue, which is about the work of Dr. Sylvia Earle. She is um, uh, the world's uh, most uh, accomplished female marine biologist. And uh, she has created a movement called Hope Circles. Uh, Hope Circles are um, protected marine sanctuaries. Uh, and she has uh, set up a not-for-profit organisation for people to actually nominate. Uh, anyone around the world can do this. You can nominate a Hope Circle um, and they will then help advocate um, with you to actually get that uh, marine area protected. So this represents uh, her phenomenal work. Now to uh, obviously a very large uh, area, Pacific Ocean Protected Area. So Pacific Ocean Protected Area um, is about, uh, this work came about because of the work that I've been doing uh, with Greenpeace, because they're actually up um, in Indonesia at the moment, actually fighting uh, for marine protected zones. Uh, and this work has a, uh, the full, the sort of the heavy points of this work are the spilletsias, um, which are more commonly known as the bird of paradise. Um, that anchor it and give it that tropical feel. I wanted people to have the experience when they looked at the work that they could think about uh, where that, that, feel that climate um, and then feel, and then think about that, uh, that, that ocean. Because I think we can relate to the nature um, of the Pacific faster than we can relate to the water. When you think about Pacific Ocean, we just think blue. Uh, but if you describe Pacific climate, uh, it, it has a more, it's, so the, the, the flora and the fauna in this work really are there to ground you quickly into that ocean space. Um, and then uh, I was really interested in working on this ocean area because of the work that I'm doing with Greenpeace. And finally, the blue beating heart of our world. So that is about caring for our ocean fundamentally. The, um, the, the, the pink leaves in that um, are from a lily pilly uh, tree, um, locally from uh, collected. And uh, it's, I, it's in part that work, I was really inspired to use that, uh, that very pink nature to, to, to create this sense of being in awe of nature. Because when you, when you see the lily pilly pink leaves on mass, a part of you can't actually believe that that's, that that's exactly what the, that colour that they are. That's a bit, and it's that it has a hyper real feel for it, which I hope then grounds people when they see the work, um, that you can really see the, the, the variety and the different pinks of that each leaf. Uh, and I, I, I'm just so blown away by the ingenuity of nature. Um, I love feeling this sense of just being so inferior to nature, um, that nature is, uh, is and, and I know a lot of this work came from my work, um, from working on Sea the Change and understanding the genius that is blueprints that are built into seeds. I just think it's extraordinary that a tree can grow pink leaves. Uh, it's something we can't do as humans and I, and I hope that people have this sense of being in awe of nature because I think when you feel in awe of nature and you feel small compared to nature um, and you realise that in the end nature will bat last, uh, that, that then inspires you to care more about protecting our environment. What, what were the key messages that you want to transmit through these works? We have thousands and thousands of national parks in the world, but we actually don't have more than 1% of the world's oceans protected. So I am, I am constantly ruminating on the question, why is it that we have so many national parks but we don't have marine parks? And why is only 1% of the world's ocean protected? And uh, that statistic depends on what, you, what the definition of fully protected uh, actually is. Uh, so that is, for me, the key message that I'm hoping people will get from this work is, is to be really inspired to think more about the ocean and how you can protect it um, and the importance of actually getting to uh, 
uh, there's a global alliance treaty uh, for Australia that Australia has an opportunity to sign in August um, at a UN Council and that treaty would sign us to uh, an agreement that says that we're going to protect 30% of our marine sanctuaries by 2030. So ultimately, I hope that people who come to see the exhibition are inspired to support that petition and inspired to do more to protect our ocean. You've gone from seeds, such small things which produce such extraordinary plant growth, to the majesty of the oceans and the flora and fauna which surround it. Do you have a sense of what's coming next? <laughs> oh, such a good question. I have so many ideas right now. Uh, so I will stay in the um, ocean advocacy space. Um, I have a lot more work to do here. Well, we look forward to the results of that work. And thank you very much indeed, Sally Mackay, for sharing your exhibition with us. Thank you so much, Richard, for your time and for having me on exhibition.